My name is Quill Taylor, and I have taken it upon myself to record my findings pertaining to the life of a young boy named Anthony Todd. This is Quill Taylor, recording entry number eight, written on my eighth day in Moorgrove. Entry begins. It's currently late afternoon, and contrary to previous evidence, I feel more comfortable writing at this time of day now. Upon talking to Abby earlier today, quite a few of my questions were answered regarding the urges I had previously mentioned. Looking back, my notes on my experience are disorganized to say the least, and that will prove to be quite hindering should I need to analyze them in the future. I will attempt to summarize my experience here using the information given to me. On my first day in Morgrove, it appears that I unknowingly set a precedent for how I should siphon my time each day. Abby has informed me that this is the standard for all of Morgrove's residents, including herself. I question this, as I had observed changes in her behaviour, but after a few examples, it seems that she's not quite as immune as I had believed her to be. These patterns I established went so far as to dictate what I would do when I woke up, what time I'd go out for a walk, where I would go, and what I would do when I got home. There was a time for reading fantastical adventures, and a time where I felt I needed to write in my journal. When I had attempted to break that pattern, I ended up having a negative reaction, and it resulted in several pages covered in unintelligible scribbles. Fortunately, I have since developed different habits that I think will prove more productive, such as visiting the manor each day. I asked Abby about it, and she said she doesn't mind my being here. It's a large building, and Essa comes and goes as she pleases. It seems that Abby is quite a gracious host, allowing friends and acquaintances, in my case, to go as they please. However, as many of the people remain in town and the manor is quite offset, they don't have many visitors. Apparently, there used to be a few others living in the manor, but have since left. When I asked Abby if they were still in town, she had merely shrugged and left the subject. I assume that's a yes, due to the situation with trying to leave. Abby and I talked briefly about the bus, mainly where it goes, and bringing up how I'd be able to leave again. I'm still not inclined to, but it's nice of her to give me the option again, I think. I'm still not sure if she's concerned for me, or just really wants me gone. She gives me so many mixed signals. Anyway, I realised during this conversation that I had been on my phone during the bus ride into town. I mentioned this to Abby, wondering if losing my phone had anything to do with the technology acting strangely. She shrugged again, as she would continue to do whenever a topic of conversation she was not very inclined to follow was brought up, and told me that I was partly correct. The other aspect she didn't describe in much detail, but it seemed to follow the lines of memory alteration, alluding to the patterns. I don't think there's much chance of me finding my phone anytime soon. I asked Abby if the manor had a phone, and she gave me a long look before changing the topic. I'm choosing to take that as a no. I haven't seen Anthony around both times I visited the manor. Abby easily informed me that part of Anthony's habit was walking Noddington around for a bit during the morning, and then in the afternoon he played outside in the yard for a few hours. Nothing else eventful happened until a bit after I'd left. I decided to explore the forest near the manor for a bit, as Abby had told me the property of the manor was free for me to roam as long as I'm here. It was an odd permission to be granted, but I am grateful for that bit of freedom, especially since it allowed me to find the entrance to what looked like a large cave. I'm not sure how far down it goes, but I think I'll bring it up to Abby at some point. I'm going to stay at home tomorrow to collect myself and write some more, hopefully it'll clear my mind a bit, so I'll ask the day after. I feel awkward saying it, but I'm excited. I feel that there's something bigger going on here, and I'm glad someone else noticed, or I might have been a bit more hesitant to accept it all. Perhaps I'd have ended up like everyone else in town. Imagine doing the same exact thing every day. I don't think I could do it, honestly. Maybe that's part of the reason why I'm not as affected. Abby still hasn't explained to me why exactly I'm able to leave and why I seem to be more aware than everyone else about these things. I don't think she knows, honestly. Somehow that's more discomforting. Entry ends, finally. But don't you do that.
I'm not going to walk around here in the dark, so you'd better work. Hmm. There's definitely something here. It does look like a sort of tomb, I suppose. I wonder what that noise was. Hmm. I'm gonna try to get this thing open. See what we have here. A book? Hold on. How did this get here? No! Ah! Sasha! Oh, God, you scared me. What are you doing down here? What are you doing down here? Don't give me that. I saw you come down here by yourself. And? And what if you've gotten hurt again? Your ankle is barely healed. What do you think you're doing? I just... Look. I heard something down here last time you came and... You heard something? Yeah, like a... like a bang! Uh, I don't know. I thought I heard something. Why did you come alone? Abby made it fairly clear to me yesterday that she wanted nothing more to do with these caves. I meant me, Quill. I would have come with you if you had just asked. Well, frankly, I assumed you agreed with her. I do. But I also don't want you hurt. Look, fine. Abby's being difficult right now. I understand not wanting to confide in her. You don't know your heart. But I need you to know that you've still got someone on your side. We haven't known each other for long, Quill, but I'm just as involved in this as Abby is. You can ask me for help. I found a book. What? I returned a book to the library last week, and I haven't been able to find it. Well, here it is. It was in this coffin thing. I just wanted to come check it out because I heard a clang and I thought maybe someone was in there, but that's obviously not the case. I just found this. Ah. I think we should go back to the manor. Yeah, um... Yeah, you're right. Let me just, uh... Did you bring it again? Sasha, don't you start. I just want to record this. It's fine. I understand. Just be careful with it. Abby might- If Abby comes in, she's going to either have to explain herself or leave. I'm not in the mood. I can tell. The book, Sash, History of Morgrove. At least it was. Look. It's blank. It wasn't always. When I returned it to the library, I- Wait. I returned it to the library. How did it get down into the caves? Uh, I mean, it could just be a copy of the same book. The cover, at least. No, it, it can't be. There was only one copy in the library, and no one ever goes there. Plus, look here. It's got my name on the card in the front. There's just nothing inside. That's strange. Maybe you should ask someone about it. Like... Abby, or... I should ask Liv. She doesn't usually know where books get to, but she might know more than she's letting on. Besides, Abby's been suspicious of the library, and it's on her list of places to visit. Quill, I don't know if she'd be able to tell you. It can't hurt to ask. I'll go talk to her tomorrow. Abby might know something about it. She'd at least want to know you found something down there. I don't think Abby can help. But- I don't trust her, Sasha. I tried to explain to her that I wanted her to talk to me about things, and she didn't listen. I've tried to talk to her about it. Well, it's not working. I'm sorry. I'm going to the library tomorrow. If you want to tell Abby about the book, fine. But I'm not telling her about it. That's fine. Do you want company? No, I... Actually, I wouldn't mind some company. Thank you. Of course. Are you heading home? Probably should. It's a bit late. I'll walk with you, and you can tell me about this book of yours. All right. The Domestic Life of Anthony Todd is a podcast written and recorded by J.R. Steele and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. The audio is edited using Audacity, the free editing program. 
Thanks for joining me.